In studying the Hawaiian Maile, I traveled to the sands of its birth, and far from the cliches associated with the islands, delved into one of the most fascinating cultures of the Pacific. More than just a picturesque tradition, Hawaii's cultural heritage, the dances, the chants, the interconnection with nature, hold valuable lessons for us all. Revered by the Hawaiians from time immemorial for its subtle fragrance, the Maile is a plant that is emblematic of this relationship and of the way in which traditions are evolving. Learning about the Maile, how it is used, why it's so vulnerable, and the methods being implemented to preserve it was an extraordinary experience of meeting people and of discovery. To immerse myself in the local culture, I began by getting to know the plant. Maile, which is now called Alixia stellata, is a woody vine that plays an important role in forests and in the traditions of the Hawaiian Islands. So it's in the Apocynaceae family. To be a liana, which is a woody vine, and as you can see here, it has um, this nice wooden stem. While we were told that some people were able to identify at least 12 different varieties, the five main types of Hawaiian Miley are named after the five Miley sisters, who are guardian spirits that live in the forest. The names of the five most common varieties are mainly based on the size and shape of their leaves. So, so Miley Kaluhea is, is the, 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 the sweet smelling Miley. Um, Maile Ha'ibale, the, the brittle leafed Maile, Maile Laudi'i is the small leafed Maile, um, and uh, there's Maile Pakaha as well, which doesn't have as clear of a translation, and then Maile Launui, large leafed Maile, and Maile Laudi'ili'i is the very, very small leafed Maile. The Hawaiian names are commonly used, but the scientific name is still controversial. The simple fact of changing the name has profoundly affected the status of the plant itself. Until 2002, um, uh, Maile was recognized as being endemic in Hawaii, um, Elixia oliviformis. Um, and then in 2002, there was um, a revision of the, the genus Elixia that was done by um, a man by the name of Middleton. And um, as a result of, of, his, um, of his study, um, he grouped the, the endemic Hawaiian Elixia oliviformis into um, Elixia stellata, which occurs across um, much of the Western Pacific. I would very much like to <laughs> still call our Maile Elixia oliviformis. Um, what's recognized in Hawaii now is, is it's recognized as Elixia stellata, you know, indigenous and, and not endemic. But I expect that if someone were to study um, our Maile more in depth, that they would find that it's at least endemic. These plants had Hawaiian names first. And there's nothing that can invalidate that name because the Hawaiians, as many ancient cultures, were very astute botanists in their own right. And they identified plants. Uh, if it was, it was something different about it, it often had another name that, that, that uh, you know, confirmed that, that there was a difference in the, in the two plants. Whether endemic or indigenous, Hawaiian Maile has its own specific characteristics. Maile was most commonly found not in the distant forests where we find it today, Maile used to be in the native forest all the way down to sea level. I've seen Maile growing in very dry forests. Most people think of Maile as a wet forest plant only. But it actually grows in a wide range of conditions. And in fact, the drier, lower ones are the ones that are most fragrant. Uh, there are certain places that are famous for their Maile, for the fragrance of the Maile, for the beauty of the leaves. In the islands, Maile is famous for its fragrance. Though hard to describe, it is always evoked with pleasure. The smell is cool and somewhat sweet, a little bit of vanilla-like overtones. It's a very subtle, beautiful um, smell. Uh, unlike a flower, and yet not a green smell like just crushed leaves, it has a wonderful fragrance that's almost undescribable. In Hawaiian forests, Miley plays a beneficial and recognized ecological role. Other than um, a species like that, when it grows in a great tangle and so forth, um, it, it helps in terms of water penetration and water will run down. I mean, so in terms of water interception and water, uh, you know, channeling, it's, 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 it's really important. And you know, when you have a forest that is fully vegetated from trees down to the ground. Um, it crawls on other plants in the forest and I guess from a cultural perspective, Maile, um, kind of helps to bind the forest together. It binds different elements of the forest. 
Its contribution to the forest is thus recognized across the board by everyone in Hawaii. For the Hawaiian people, Maile has always been associated with important moments and events. The plant is mentioned in many myths, chants, and prayers. So that's how that chant starts. And uh, it says, um, with the low growing lehua blossoms of the uplands and watered by the drizzly rains of Panaeva that are mixed with the scent of the maile of Panaeva. And, and so whenever you're in a place that's famous for the maile, they're going to weave the maile into the chants, just as you might weave a maile into a, into a lei that you wear. It's a beautiful thing. A lei is a garland made of natural materials that is worn as an adornment. Of all of the lei material, is one of the most treasured. So that if you receive a my lei, lei um, you know that someone thinks very highly of you. You use it for you know celebration, any type of celebration. Graduation birthday. Uh, Hawaiians like to celebrate, you know, and we celebrate <laughs> love. Uh, we celebrate, we celebrate um, life, a graduation, weddings, anything. But a lei, the gesture, the gesture of giving a lei, and it is just a. Uh, um, a way of showing our affection and what Hawaii is called aloha. When you receive a mailule, especially on graduation, it is an honor. You know, it's um, Laka, <coughs> Laka the, god, the goddess of the forest, giving you her blessing or her special um, gift. And to receive the maile, that is really um, magical. Maile is traditionally associated with Laka, the goddess of dance and of the forest. Hula, Hawaiian dance, has sacred origins, and even today hula dancers are adorned with garlands of Maile in honor of Laka. Every year at the prestigious Merry Monarch Hula Festival in Hilo, entire halau or hula schools wear Maile lei, especially for the ancient style dances. When you actually make the lei, um, it, 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 you put your mana into it, yeah? you put your energy. And because I grew up in the world of hula, I, I witnessed, I experienced the mana and the meshing of energies between, between the, the lei, the mighty lei, and the hula dancer. You know, so it's like you just add a little bit more magic to it. Maile is a, is a, is a kinolao of, of laka. Um, it's, a, it's a body form of laka. And the maile is laka. I'm not a hula dancer, but, um, but you know, laka being the, um, you know, the akua, the, the deity of the forest and of vegetation and of, of movement is, um, is, uh, is something that I identify with. So it's, whenever you have a sacred use for a plant, that uh, expands into all of its other uses. So when you wear the maile as an ornament, you, you recognize that you're wearing the body of a goddess. You know, when you use maile as a medicine, you know you have that sacred property entering into whatever treatment that you're, that you're using. So maile is special in that way. The idea of fragrance is very important to Hawaiian people. Um, fragrance is a sign that you're in a sacred place. So they will say, if you are standing on a heiau, which is a temple, um, and you smell the scent of maile, um, you know that the spirits of the ancestors are with you, with you there, um, and that they've gathered around you, as, as a lei would gather around your neck. According to tradition, gathering maile involved a certain ritual. 
It would begin with a chant or prayer asking for permission to take the plant and end with an act of thanksgiving, such as cleaning the area or leaving an offering. There is also a special technique to picking Miley, which is not meant for delicate hands. I'll twist, you see that? It breaks and I'll pinch and then I'll pull it off. Just like that, okay? Okay, remember, twist. Twist, pinch, and pull. Oh, that was so nice. And then what you do is you get the other end like this. And what we're going to do is going to tie it together. The Miley Lay of today, however, is often bought in a store. The plants are picked without any protocol to meet the demands. The price of a lay averages from $30 to $60 depending on the variety. For major events like a hula festival, thousands of Miley Lay are made and worn. The popularity of Miley has turned it into a consumer item. In order to meet the growing demand in the 1970s, it began to be imported from other Pacific Islands, such as the Cook Islands. The Miley vine is considered an umbilical cord to the land, a plant vital to the Hawaiian culture. Yet, it is declining in the wild. Why is this? In my experience, when I've talked to practitioners and wild plant gatherers, um, very commonly people have expressed to me that it's harder to find some of the causes are those that have affected all of the native forest plants in the Hawaiian Islands. Others are specific to the Miley. To begin with, the arrival of Captain Cook in 1778 and the immigration waves that followed severely altered the local ecosystems. The lowland forests were um, removed in, for large-scale large agriculture uh, 200 years ago, for, initially for, for cattle pasture and eventually sugar and pineapple plantations. And so everything from sea level to, to 2,000 feet and, and some islands even higher than that, uh, native forest um, was either burnt off or just harvested and removed. And many of these areas were in agriculture for a really long time. And yet that range from 2,000 feet to sea level was probably the range, the heart of Miley distribution, which means that all of those forests that used to have Miley are gone and the Miley with it. So I believe that well over half of the original range of Miley has been lost. The introduction of plant and animal species that are now considered invasive had an irremediable impact on local ecosystems. An invasive species is not necessarily bad in itself, but it can be very detrimental, especially on islands. Nature Conservancy wrote a watershed management plan and um, they prioritized the weeds as strawberry guava, kahili gin or Himalayan ginger, that is, and uh, Australian tree ferns as the three most habitat-destroying um, uh, invasive plants. And that's because they can grow in dense shade, and they displace, they can just, and birds spread the seeds, except for the Australian tree fern, which the spores blow in the wind, so it can get anywhere, and even in a closed, totally intact native forest, it can, the bird drops the seed, pour the guava or the ginger in it, then starts taking over. In my opinion, I believe that habitat destruction is one of the most important threats, and also other forms of habitat degradation. Certain animals that were brought in for hunting or for ranching have contributed to a loss of biodiversity. For example, by preying on the birds that help scatter the Miley seeds. Fortunately, um, all of our native honey creepers today have um, relatively small um, gape widths. They have you know, small little beaks and small little mouths, and they're unable to you know to swallow this. And other than maybe the oma'o and um, and the alala, the alala is extinct in the wild, and the oma'o. Um, this is kind of right at its limit of what it could swallow. So if it has the choice between this and something else, I would think it might choose something else. Now there's just no way of dis distributing, yeah, it's, it's just drop and roll wherever it can go. So the seeds are not being distributed as far away. Traditional gathering methods are also being challenged, and there are clear signs of over-exploitation. When we were picking with my grandpa, he didn't over-pick or he didn't, there was so much, so nobody said anything. There was abundancy. 
So today there's not an abundance, you know. It's very, today more so sacred. Uh, where you go, you don't want to tell too many people because it's not, there's not a lot. But what if all of these problems in fact pointed to a deeper cause, to a lack of connection with the forest? Miley is just one small piece and yet an amazingly powerful symbolic piece of that biological diversity. Um, and uh, to lose it is to lose something of, of huge cultural significance. Of all of the um, uh, Hawaiian plants of great significance, um, this is one where you actually have a really good chance to restore it into the range of where people can get to it uh, easily and appreciate it. From planting Miley seeds to laymaking, action is being taken to preserve the plant, its habitat, and its cultural significance. Scientific research is being done to better understand the biology and the ecology of the species. So there's a lot that people can do for Maile. Um, you know, preserving our native forests is the number one thing because if we don't have a, a native forest, there's not going to be any good place for the Maile to grow. We have been working on restoring the lower valleys of forest systems for quite a long time now, and um, for a long time, the the focus was re, was re, removing the invasive species and replanting with native hardwood trees and, and common trees like koa and okia. Um, a few years back, we as we met over this, uh, we also realized that other um, aspects of the forest were necessary because you don't just have trees and shrubs in a, in a healthy forest. You have to have the ground covers, epiphytes, ferns, and so forth. Armed with volunteers, associations are fighting to maintain wilderness areas in which invasive species are contained or under control. For example, in Kōke'e State Park on the island of Kauai. Well, we're saving selected areas. Um, areas that are still about 75% native in the canopy, but um, uh, uh, frankly it's sad to say, but about half of this 4,000 acre state park is already too weedy to be able to be weeded with current resources. But um, we pick selected areas that have endangered plants and still have native forest in them and we weed those. In addition to restoring the plant's habitat, Hawaiians can also help by taking the place of the birds and animals that used to sow the Miley seeds, a practice that is in fact mentioned in ancient chants. That, um, that is walu kahua o kamaile, which literally translates as um, scatter the seeds of the Miley. It's telling us, it's reminding people that, um, that it's our responsibility to scatter the seeds of the Miley. In doing this, one advantage is that, as in ancient times, maile can be sown in places where it will be easy to pick. What is important is to replant the local variety that's adapted to the soil, to the right altitude, and to the climate. Another solution is to grow your own maile. The more I learn about the plant, I want to grow, I want to do more for it. I mean, keep harvesting from the forest is not, is not the correct way. I mean, I learned, I mean, the more we take from the forest, it's struggling, so we need to start our own little forest here. Uh, we've collected a lot of Miley. It's actually quite easy to grow, and uh, this is one of the main plants, along with some different ferns that we've been putting in, in the restoration projects there, and uh, we encourage a lot of people to grow Miley. We've grown Miley on a large scale uh, for public outreach and, and to give people to grow in their own yards. The idea of farming Miley has already taken root on the Big Island. Well, that's that's one of the reasons we're growing it in the, in the uh, farm here is um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to reintroduce Hawaiian grown maile into the commercial market. Right now we get most of our maile from uh, Cook Island. These slopes over here in Wailea, they used to say that as you passed, you could smell the maile in the winds. So that's what we want to recreate is the maile back in the place it's supposed to be. Harvesting methods also need to be improved. Getting to, to know your forest is important. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend people harvest from areas that they don't know. If you know your forest, you're observing your forest, you'll know how to harvest correctly. You won't take too much. Um, you won't take in an inappropriate way if you know your forest. And that is a key point. 
the best way to preserve native plants is to re-establish local customs and practices. That collaboration with cultural practitioners and communities is what will really enhance and support integrity of social ecological systems. I think that's very, very important. When we did, when we harvested the Miley the other day, we went through a protocol. So one of the things that we're trying to accomplish is not only to make it a, an, economic, an economically sustainable business, uh, but we also want to bring back culture and, and the, um, the spiritual aspect of Miley. It's, it's, you know, you look at it and it's just a vine, right? But it's, it's really a living, uh, a living entity and uh, it's protected by Laka and um, it has a, a nature of its own. It's not just a normal vine. Um, the Hawaiian word kuleana re refers to a responsibility. And the responsibility is, is a two-directional thing. Um, you go into the forest, you have a, a kuleana. In that term, it's like a right. You have the right and privilege to harvest. But the other part of your kuleana is then your responsibility to, to take care of that forest. And um, you cannot just take, 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 and never, and never return. You have to harvest it so that it does not negatively affect the plant. And then you, should t you have to care for that area. So however way they want to interpret caring for an area, they go into the forest that they pull out weedy plants that are around their favorite miley patches or, or whatever, people need to determine for themselves. The sacred and beloved miley is a precious resource that enables the Hawaiian people to reconnect with the forest and with their sense of responsibility. It can inspire all of us wherever we live to learn to ma la ma aina, to take care of the land around us for the benefit of all living things. When entering the forest, you know, folks should realize that they are not in they're not in man's realm anymore. That um, that they are in they're in the forest. They're in the realm of of Akua, in the realm of um, those things that give life to people. Um, you know that the forest is what is what produces um, the water and the air that sustain all life in Hawaii. Um, the forest is is where our um, you know, our, our, our deities live, where um, our kupuna live, um, all of the different plants and animals that give inspiration to our life as, as Hawaiians and to our identity as Hawaiians. So when you go to the forest, um, you can at least offer your, um, your being in that correct frame of mind to enter the forest, um, to take a moment to pause and um, and, and, and be still and to listen um, and, and just recognize that you are entering a different realm that, mm -hmm. that is, not, is not for man. E na kino malui kalani malue ho Oh, my God.